Hello everyone, uh, Todd Smith here uh, with Comcast Business. And uh, today what I wanna talk about um, is something that I deal with a lot. It's uh, Wi-Fi survey reports um, and tailoring them so that you're really getting to the meat of, of what you wanna show the customer, what's gonna be interesting to them, you know, the reason why they hired you to come out and uh, do the survey and get the data. So tailored Wi-Fi survey reports, sometimes less is more. Um, so before I dive in though to, uh, you know, the slide and the details, um, I want to talk about a survey that, that I did a few months ago where I go on site, they didn't give us a ton of information as to what kind of problems that they were having there. It was a large warehouse. Um, but what I asked them, well, do you, do you, have you had a survey here before? Uh, I had heard previously that they had someone out at some point before we came out to do a survey. Um, and I wanted to learn a bit more about that. So I asked them and they said, well, we've got a report. We got this PDF that they sent us. I'm like, oh, that's great. We'll send it on over. Let me take a look at it. And so um, let me pull that up and share it. All right, this is what the PDF report was. Probably looks familiar to a lot of, uh, a lot of us who, who use Akahau. Um, I saw this, I'm like, oh, all right, so yeah, they use Echo How, that's good, and they've got good tools. Um, and, you know, I started scrolling through it, and there's this, like, right off the bat, I'm seeing, like, their walking path and some information about, you know, what they're uh, looking for, the requirements are. Scrolling, I'm, I'm seeing some heat map now. Scroll, 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 <laughs> scroll. So just tons and tons of information, uh, not that effectively organized, in my opinion. Um, and, you know, what do you take from this? And so I asked the guy, like, well, when they gave this to you, did they, what would they say? And they said, well, they said everything, the coverage overall is, is green. Let me see if I can find that heat map. Oh, here we go. So coverage is pretty good. Um, here we go, look at this one on, on, on 2.4. So you don't, you don't really have any issues, coverage is good. And this is a report that uh, they left with the customer. And so I'm like, wow, I, I, that's, that's pretty amazing. Um, not only did they not go into a lot of details about you know, what their findings were, the report that they left them was just this, it's the one click report, right? It's the one that, Morocco, that uh, Ekahau has that you know, throws, I call it the kitchen sink report. Everything goes into this report. Um, and look at this. It is, as it said, yeah, right here, 172 pages of Wi-Fi report. That, that just boggles my mind that this is the deliverable from this previous um, firm that went out there to do the survey. So that kind of leads me to, again, um, what I want to talk about today. So the, the, Built-in Ekahau, the one-click survey. Again, um, you know, the kitchen sink reports. Uh, I'm really curious, like, who uses the kitchen, the, the one-click report? I know some of us do um, because it presents a lot of information. Um, but you gotta ask yourself, okay, if you're using that report, then um, why are you presenting everything? What's the story here? I think as we, as Wi-Fi engineers, when we go do a survey, uh, it's our responsibility to present something back to the customer that they can actually use. It's actionable. Um, that, that helps them understand what the next steps are. The report we just looked at did not have any of that. Um, and then also, you know, where are your primary observations and recommendations? Um, in that report we just looked at, there were no primary observations and, and recommendations. It was just a data dump into a report. Okay, um, so um, this kind of leads me now to uh, another survey that I did um, a little more recently. Uh, it, it was one of those where I'm already, this is in California, I'm already in Southern California, and my boss calls me up and says, hey, can you go? Uh, up to LA, I was in San Diego at the time, and just go on site um, and do a survey uh, at this retail uh, location. 
there'll be a guy there to can just fill you in all the details. So I'm like, sure, I, I'm, I'm, I'm close by, let me go ahead and do that. I go up there and I'm, I'm talking to this guy. He's, he's one of the you know, IT, uh, I think he's a director. Um, and so I didn't have those early, those calls, right, where you get the information ahead of time <laughs> before you go on site. So I was asking him all the questions, right? Well, you know, why do you want to do a survey? You know, what's going on here? What, what are you experiencing here? And he, you know, he said, well, we know that there's coverage issues. The network is old. Uh, it's due time for a refresh. And, you know, when we refresh, we want to make sure that we have coverage because our associates are just telling us that the Wi-Fi sucks, which we hear a lot, right? Um, and it's like, okay, that, that's, that's great. And well, tell me about the devices that your associates are using. And it's like, well, we have these old, uh, these scanners that um, for one reason or another, before my time, this is him talking again, um, someone made the decision that these devices all have to be uh, connecting on 2.4 gigahertz. Um, and so, that's what they're using. They're using 2.4 gigahertz at a, this retail uh, facility. And as we all know, retail is usually in a location where there's a lot of other retail. So there's a lot of neighboring Wi-Fi uh, around, which as we all know, uses 2.4 gigahertz. Um, and we, we also know that with 2.4, there's only a few channels to work with. And so there's interference all over the place. So this IT director said we want to Part of why we want to do the survey is to show those who made this decision, who we're not sure who made this decision years ago because it was before my time, but we want to show leadership that we better get off 2.4. It's not a good idea. That's, you know, a lot of people, at least in IT and networking, uh, at least understand that about, about Wi-Fi. Like, okay, so you want to understand what the existing 2.4 environment is so that you can bring this back to leadership and get them to make the decision to get new devices, replace these 2.4 only devices so that the associates in the store who, you know, are the ones making sales can have tools that actually work for them. And like, all right, great. And so now I kind of know what I'm there for as I do my survey. Um, and so in my mind, I'm kind of going through what, these questions that we have up here on the slide. You know, who's asking for the survey? Um, you know, one thing that I like to understand is like, is it operations who probably doesn't know a lot about Wi-Fi or is it coming, is it IT driven? Um, who's going to receive this report? Who's the ultimate customer? Who's gonna, you know, um, make a decision hopefully based off what we're presenting in the report? And then how well do they understand Wi-Fi? If it's not, the networking team that we're dealing with, then they're probably not gonna know a lot about Wi-Fi. And so that needs to be reflected in our report because again, we want them to be able to take action on what we're recommending they do based on the results of the survey. Um, so let me pull up this report here. I for, forget, forget what's uh, on this report. Let's take a look. All right, so this is a report um, that I actually like uh, this report and, and a lot of the information that's in the report because I actually think that the information is uh, it, it's useful uh, as a as a Wi-Fi engineer. Let me just scroll down so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, a lot of this stuff here in this report, once we get through all this stuff, is actually good information. So we can actually see some of um, the walking path. That's interesting. Uh, all right. Well, here's you know the uh, five gigahertz coverage on the second level. All right, that's interesting. They got a graph down here, which is pretty cool. Um, again, this is, uh, you know, your secondary coverage. Um, again, so you've got the, the heat map, you've got the graph, um, and it just goes on through SNR. All really good information as, as a Wi-Fi engineer. This is, this is interesting stuff. I, I, I like this. Um, and, you know, it just goes on and on and on of all of this really good information that I'm interested in, I like to know this about um, sites where there's Wi-Fi that I might be uh, either troubleshooting or um, surveying. So this is good stuff. Um, the issue I have with this, um, while I like it as a Wi-Fi engineer, it's hard to follow if you don't know Wi-Fi. Um, you know, there's just page after page after page of information, I mean, it's showing like, each AP, you know, the signal, the coverage you're getting from each AP, 
Um, again, as an engineer, that's, that's, that's cool, I like that. And so you're going down, again, this is like 89 pages long. Um, and I'm going, I'm actually looking for something here. Uh, let's keep on going, going, where is it, where is it? We're almost there, I think. Um, oh, what is this? Oh, here we go. High level RF configuration recommendations. So they have recommendations in here. This is awesome. Uh, recommendation one, you know, you, you know, in, interesting stuff there. Um, kind of a lot going on, but that, there's a recommendation. I like it. Uh, recommendation two, all right, there's, there's more than one recommendation. That, that's interesting. Three, four. There's four recommendations in here. That's, that's, that's awesome. I really like that they not only gathered the data, but they actually went through and analyzed the data and came back with some recommendations for the customer. That's extremely important when we're delivering the results of our, of our surveys. But they're way at the bottom of the report. Um, and again, depending on who the audience is, um, I'm not quite sure someone who's not in um, you know, the networking team or who is a wireless engineer will really know and understand you know, how to implement the recommendations or which recommendation, because there's four, to implement. Um, so again, another example of, you know, it's good, there's really good information there, but it's, it's you know, who's the audience? And so let me go back to, to the slide here. All right, so who is the target audience? Um, kind of went through these bullets here. It's, this is very important for us to know as we not only do the survey, so that we know what we're looking for when we're there on site gathering data, but extremely important when we're now interpreting the data and presenting you know, our conclusions, our recommendations um, in, that, uh, in that report. And so here we go. Uh, what are your observations and recommendations? Um, in the example we just saw, their recommendations were way at the bottom of the report. 89 pages, it was down there in the 80s, I think. Um, a lot of scrolling to get there. We shouldn't bury our observations. We shouldn't bury our recommendations. Put them at the top because that's what people want to see. That's where they want to go and they don't want to have to go navigate through all of your really important information that you as an engineer want to be able to share because look what I did. It's, I, you know, I found all these really cool things. At the end of the day, they just want to know what to do next. What are my next steps? Put them at the top of your report. Your customers will greatly appreciate that. Um, a nice thing about it as well is if you put that at the top, then everything you put after that can support the recommendations that you're making. So it's all supportive information. Um, so let me show an example of, of what that might look like. This is actually, I, I believe, the site that I described before, the retail site in California. Um, and right away, I kind of put some information about the site here. Um, maybe I should scroll in a bit. So it's easily more easily seen. You know, the square footage of the site, existing APs, um, and then down in the report, you know, I go into what my recommendations are as far as the, the design, how it should be augmented. Um, scrolling down again, this kind of just shows, here's, here's the floor plan, here's where the APs are. Just some quick bites of information. Here's the existing AP configuration. Um, and then, bam, observations and recommendations. And it goes through and I, you know, I, I can explain like, well, I've seen they had four APs that were there. Uh, I knew that they knew that going into it. What they didn't know is that only three of them were actually broadcasting the SSIDs for that company. Um, and so that's something that I presented to them. Uh, and then I kind of built the case for what this IT director shared with me. They wanted to show leadership. They need to get off 2.4. They need to update their devices that can connect on five gigahertz. And so I went in and just my recommendations, like that short term and long, long term, move your devices to five gigahertz. Um, you know, I went and actually and verified the, some of the ones that they're using at the store, they actually do support five gigahertz. Um, so it wouldn't be hard to actually move them over to five gigahertz. Um, and then some other um, recommendations. And then I just kind of go right into information that's going to support what my recommendations are. Um, and so I show coverage. Everyone wants to see the heat maps, the coverage, you know, the, the, uh, the graphs here that also kind of represent that data. Um, and then I'm going right into 2.4, right? Which is, which is what they want. 
to know about. Interference, lots of it. You know, we all know that. It's retail. Um, lots of neighboring Wi-Fi, so tons of interference. You know, it's reflective there as well. Channel utilization. It, it wasn't the worst I've ever seen, but it wasn't great uh, on the utilization side on 2.4. It is great on 5 gigahertz. Lots of uh, airtime available on 5 gigahertz. And so I'm building the case again for the customer who's going to present this back to their leadership. Here we go. This is interesting, I thought. Um, on channel 1, there's 101 uh, APs that were seen um, by the Echo House sidekick on channel 1. That includes you know, neighboring Wi-Fi. That includes people who might have hotspots turned on on their phones. Anything that the sidekick can see, it's, it's going to show here. So it's very, you know, you can see here, channel one, there's 101, 6, 145, 11, a little better, 61 APs on that channel, using that channel. But what's, it's a completely different story here on the five gigahertz, right? We know there's a lot more channels on the five gigahertz, but this kind of shows them, look, there's all this open spectrum that we can be using that's not being interfered with. You know, our, our, our sales associates are gonna have a better experience with the tools that they're using. They're going to stop saying the Wi-Fi sucks uh, if we can get them on five gigahertz. Um, and then down below, you know, we talk about some design recommendations. But again, this reports, you know, it has the recommendations, the observations towards the top, and it's tailored for what the customer really wants to know about, so that he can implement the changes that he would like to see made um, at their locations. So let me hop back over now to. Uh, I think final slide, we know now how to kind of structure our reports, keep it simple, um, put the really good stuff at the top, the stuff that your customers are interested in doing. Don't overload with data. Uh, I know we love to show off that we can gather all this data and we know what it all means, but at the end of the day, they don't, they don't really care about that. They just want to know what to do. Tailor your reports so that it's very effective um, and again, provides the customer what, what, what they need and, and a path forward. Um, and then beyond that, what I like to do here is talk about creating your own custom report templates. Um, in Ekahau, you know, we talked early on about the, the one-click report, right? And the huge data dump that we get from all of that. Uh, well, we can actually go in and, and grab the specific things that we want from that one-click report or some of the built-in templates that come with, with Ekahau. I would say when you have a, a survey that you've done, run all of those built-in templates so you can see what that data looks like. Um, and then if you like what you see, then take that bit and put it in your own custom template. Um, and then, you know, it, it's a way to show that you basically, you're, you're, you know, your uh, you know, experience as a, as a Wi-Fi engineer, um, your, your abilities as a Wi-Fi engineer, you're, you're able to, demonstrate in a very effective way in your report that you know what you're talking about, that you're an authority, and that they should uh, take your recommendations uh, and then come back again to you when they, when they need more uh, help and, and you know, uh, for other sites that they might have. Um, but, you know, talk to, one thing like here, you know, if you're wondering like, well, what, what, what should I include? Talk to other Wi-Fi engineers about what they include. You can even ask them, uh, hey, can you send me your, your report template so I can look at it? Um, or you can go and just go on, on Google, go on blogs. People oftentimes will share um, their report templates. Other Wi-Fi engineers, they just go look up their blogs and if they talk about report templates, they probably have something they, that, they'll, that they're very uh, willing to share. But as you do that, again, it's gonna make you look much better as, as you go and present your findings um, from the surveys that, that you've done or from the analysis that you've done on um, perhaps somebody else's uh, data that, that was collected. Uh, so again, um, just want to just, uh, you know, illustrate how important it is for our reports to not be huge data dumps. Focus in on, on what it is the customer wants to know about, make it plain what they need to do to move forward, um, and then present it in a way that shows that you're an authority, you know what you're talking about, and they'll want to have you back again for the next survey. Thank you very much.